So, here we are again, back on the club lake. Uh, restrictions still haven't lifted. We're, um, we're waiting for uh, the Angley Trust to sort of um, sort, sort things out and hopefully over the next couple of weeks we'll all be kind of like back to normal, I guess. Hopefully, be able to travel a little bit more. Uh, but for those that are sticking to it, it's, um, it's proving to be quite difficult. A lot of people have not even got any, anywhere near them that can come fishing. But anyway, I'm very lucky to have something on my doorstep, I guess. But anyway, um, back on the club lake, um, day off work, and um, the water's looking really, really chocolate. It's something else to look out for when you're, if you're fishing somewhere that's, you know, you know holds a lot of fish. Um, in the winter, obviously, they're very, very slow, lethargic, not moving around a lot. And so um, the bottom's not getting stirred up and, you know, things are not moving around. But when it starts to get this time of year, good thing to look out for if you want to know that your, your fish are moving around and they're active, especially if you're not seeing things. This is the thing as well. A lot of people say, oh, don't, we don't see a lot, you know, really hard to see stuff. But as soon as that water turns chocolatey, as long as you've not got any, you know, stream, um, stream fed uh, exits or entries, or entries into the lake, then obviously, um, it's going to be caused by the carp most of the time. So yeah, um, the water was really chocolatey. Let's hope that um, Nick a couple of fish. Let's see. Well, after a couple of hours of sitting around without any bleeps and no liners and any indication to tell me there's any fish in front of me, um, I decided to have a move, even though it was pouring down with rain. Sometimes these things just have to be done. So something I like to do, um, more so at this time of year than any other time of year really, is, um, is to keep my options open and to keep moving. If I've not had a bite within a couple of hours, I do tend to move quite a bit. As you know, my um, all my gear's always kept on my barra. I try not to take anything off if I can help it, uh, other than my tea and my water. But um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's handy if, if, um, if the lake isn't particularly busy and you can move and if you've not had anything or any signs of uh, fish around in the you know in the first few hours then sometimes it's often worth um, worth moving the fish tend to sort of shoal up this time of year move around in really tight packs if not in one big tight pack sometimes depends on um, where you're fishing and stuff but and how many fish are in the venue I guess but um, yeah I just, just had a move to the other corner of the lake basically so it's kind of i'm still on the back of the wind but um i'm kind of just just on it I'm just being able to get on it if you like i don't think they're going to be right on it at the moment it's blowing a southerly which is, which tends to be a lot warmer than any other wind really but it's um the time of year just dictates that it's not going to be particularly warm still so i've edged my bets let's see how we get on couple of rods out on, on a couple of nice looking sort of areas, I had a little bit of a feel around with the lead just quickly and uh, yeah, game on.
So as I've mentioned previously, uh, moving is, you know, pretty much paramount to my winter angling. And um, so often I've caught fish by just moving, which uh, which is exactly what happened. I moved, got the rods out, and the left rod was away with a nice fish in the net. Happy days. fish of the day, 19 pound on the nose, finally getting into some of the better ones and uh, taking those little, little mainline wafters with little tiny bags, happy days, spinning round, have a have a sight. Remember to keep them wet. Big old mouth, look. Quite a powerful fish. Great bite. Nice take. Lovely fish. Coming to the end of February. And uh, happy, happy. Slipping back, early days. Hopefully have a few more. So something else I tend to do as the weather starts to sort of uh, warm up and the, the temperatures start to warm a little bit more, I just start to look at a few more food items. Um, so I use a lot of pellet during the winter, and, um, but I don't usually add a lot of food items other than liquid foods or liquids like smart liquids and stuff. Uh, but what I tend to do is as the water starts to warm up and the fish start to get more on the move, I start to break down boilies and use a bit of boilie crumb amongst my pellets. So, you know, if fish do come in, um, it keeps them there a little bit longer as the pellet sort of like tends to wear down pretty quick, you know, it tends to dissolve pretty quickly. So I've got a few more uh, bits and pieces in there basically of just boiled boilie crumb. Uh, again, it's not a lot of food item in there, but it just keeps them there for a little bit longer. So as the spring progresses and as the warmer tends to um, starts to come along I start to add more and more uh, bigger food items um, you know just to sort of bulk out the actual feed itself so through the winter and the colder type of weather I like to use small PVO bags like this as you can see it's not really much bigger than the top of my thumb but it's quite a lot of food in there once that breaks down uh, as you can see from the time lapse there it shows you the difference between how much is in each bag um, and if you compare that to like the size of the little wafters I've been using, used quite a lot in the winter, that's that's quite considerably, you know, considerably bigger than the actual hook bait itself. So what I like to do is sometimes, a lot of the time, I like to marry them up so they're more or less exactly the same size. So when they break down, there's hardly any anything around it really, just a little bit more attraction and stuff. But they can suck that up all in one go. So in the cold weather little tiny bags against slightly bigger bags again you know they're really tiny but it can make the difference between a bite and not a bite so I'll give it a go So the rig I'm using, as mentioned before, um, is a six or seven inch length of Calder Camo 15 pound strip on the hook link. Got a size eight wide gape there, hand sharpened. Always like to make sure my points are really sharp. 
got a 14 mil washed out wafter there, mainline wafter, and you might notice we've got a big shrink tube kicker on there. I mentioned this in the last video, um, and then we've got a little section there, basic, which is um, which has been stripped back, to just give you that little bit of a hinge. Um, very, very effective rig, really easy to tie, and um, yeah, give it a go. Something else to bear in mind, um, which is a good little tactic, is to recast. And I tend to recast every couple of hours during the winter, the colder months. Um, I'll put on a fresh hook bait, um, <clears throat> a new bag, a fresh little bag, and have a recast. Anyway, this is what I did, and it uh, wasn't long, 25 minutes, and the right rod was away, and uh, we had a nice fish in the net. Just goes to show a bit of perseverance, and uh, one of the slightly better ones has, has turned up. I don't know how big it is, might be a scraper 20, but um, it's a long old common, so we'll get him out, have a little look at him. So he's got the hook bait in his, in his mouth there still. Well looks just in the corner of the mouth on a little simple rig that I've been showing you guys. Quite a nice clean mouth. Steady there. 24 pound on the dot. Might just be a little tad over, but I'll call it 24 pound. That'll do for this time of year. It's a lovely common. Especially considering the ones that we've uh, we've been having of late, so perseverance is king. A twenty-four pound common on the nose. Absolutely mint. Let's give him a bit of water. Something else that's really important as well is to keep them wet. You know, always keep them wet. Don't matter what time of year it is, just keep them wet. And uh, not only is it good for the fish, but they look really good in photos as well when they're when they're wet and shiny. Like you know, nothing worse than seeing loads of bubbles all over them and all dry and, I've, and that, it's horrible. So keep them nice and wet, and they'll look nice for you in your photos. And uh, and it's good for them when they're out of the water as well, so. Quick, get that rod back out and see if I can get another one. Well pleased.
So as it was getting towards that time of the evening, I thought I'd just put a, a few pouchfuls of 10 mils um, around this particular rod. Um, you know, as we know, they tend to feed in the evenings and stuff. Um, so it's always worth trying. And with the weather temperatures, you know, starting to creep up, very spring-like, um, I thought I'd add a bit of bait around this uh, particular hook bait. So it wasn't long um, and that rod went off probably within the hour. Um, really, really pleased actually because it went up on a scale at 24 and a half. Um, really, really long, like probably one of the longest fish I've ever caught at that size. Um, in fact, it just about went in the landing net. Its head was at the spreader block and its tail was still flipped over the front of the, front of the net. Um, so yeah, incredibly old, lovely old common. Look at this lovely old thing. It's so long. Look at this. Should be in a river. Doesn't want to behave. 24 and a half pound. And it was a funny bite actually, a funny fight as well. It was banging its head, really banging its head like I've never known before. Incredible, but look at the tower on that. Big mouth. Nice clean mouth. Got a few markings on this side, a few loss of scales. We'll spin around and have a look on the other side. Wow. That's an old girl. I tell you, that's an old girl. That's seen some. That's seen some things. Happy days. So pleased. So pleased. You know, I started fishing here when it's really cold. Middle of winter, freezing cold, and finally got some of the nice ones coming through. And she ain't happy. Still fighting. Just wants to go back. Massive pecks on it. Incredible animal. Oh. So I'm going to slip it back. What a result. That was the last one of the day. No more bites were forthcoming, but I was really, really pleased to have those. Really makes it all the more worth 
getting out of bed for. Long may it continue.